This is Shavina from the QuickBooks team. Connecting your banking credit card accounts to QuickBooks is one of the most helpful and time-saving features to accurately record your company's financial transactions. QuickBooks pulls the details from your bank so you don't have to enter transactions manually. All you have to do is approve the work. In this video, we'll go over creating and matching bank rules and how to resolve for missing transactions. If you're just getting started, be sure to check out our video on how to connect your bank or credit card accounts to QuickBooks first. We also have a video on how to categorize bank and credit card transactions manually. These two videos are linked for you in the description section of this video. Please watch these videos before continuing on if you need help connecting your bank. Now that you have your bank connected, let's get into creating bank rules in QuickBooks Online. Bank rules save you time by setting up automatic categorization of regularly recurring transactions, even if they are slightly different each month. In the left menu, let's navigate to the Transactions tab and over to Banking. As you can see, I have my two accounts set up. The Scotia account is an automatic download account and the BMO account was a manual upload. To do this, I went to the drop-down here and uploaded from file. To get this file, I downloaded my transactions from my credit card account and then uploaded this file to QuickBooks Online. My transactions are now sitting here for review, but I need help getting these categorized. I'm gonna click on the Rules tab in the top menu bar and then go ahead and click on New Rule to get started. This field is for the name that will show up on when the transaction is automatically categorized. It's good to be descriptive with the rule name so you know exactly what rule was applied. Next, you're gonna set some parameters. This tells QuickBooks to apply the rules to either a money in or money out transaction. The third field on this form is where you'll choose the bank or credit card account to apply the rule to. You can choose all bank accounts if you have similar transactions hitting multiple accounts, or alternatively, you can have the rule apply to a specific bank account. Next, you decide if any or all of the below conditions must be met for the rule to apply. Below are all the conditions you'll set for your rule. Bank text is the transaction detail QuickBooks receives from the bank. Depending on the bank, this may include information such as store number, city, province, phone number, date, etc. If you use this field, simply cut and paste the generic portion of the bank text excluding the store number, city, etc. from the bank feeds area and use contains as the condition. So I'll just fill this out before moving on. I'm gonna create a rule for fuel. My bank text is going to contain SO And I'm going to add one more line for Petro. I'll put Petro can because that's how it shows up on my from my bank account. Alternatively, you can use the description field, which is associated with the transaction. This is the cleaned up QuickBooks interpretation of the bank text. Adding more conditions here will allow you to fine tune the rule if you wish. And next, you'll choose where you want to assign these transactions. So if you choose money out, the transaction types are expense, transfer, and check. Changes if you choose money in to deposit credit card, a transfer, or a sales receipt. I'm going to leave this as money out because this was an expense. The 
category is where you'll decide which income or expense accounts are affected. In my case, I'll choose travel. The split option here allows you to add multiple lines by amount or percentage. This is useful if you need to allocate certain transactions across several accounts. For example, for a loan payment, you might need to track to a liability account and an interest expense account. So you can do that here. For fixed amounts, you can use the drop down and change to amount and add a tax code for each level of the split. You can add a line to add more accounts to the transaction to split it even further. Or not split at all. The next option here is the payee field where you will enter the customer or supplier name, again depending on if it's money in or money out, and this field is recommended not required. If you don't split, your tax options are here. Again, this is an optional field. If you have location or class tracking turned on in your QuickBooks settings, you'll see the options here to classify this transaction further. The Assign More button opens up the Memo field, and then at the bottom here, you can choose to automatically apply this rule to all your transactions, and it will automatically make an entry in QuickBooks. I would suggest only using auto add on rules if you're not manually entering transactions as well. In other words, if you're manually adding income or expense transactions from the create menu and you also have the auto add turned on in your rules, your transactions will be du duplicated. So if you turn this off, it will show up on the bank feed screen for you to review. So I'm going to turn this off. The category is missing. I'm going to go ahead and save this rule. And then let's take a look at the bank feed screen. You can see how these transactions have a green box which show a rule has been applied. If you click anywhere on the line, you can edit and make changes to the particular transaction. You can split the transaction at this point if needed, and you can also attach um, receipt attachments. By not adding the rule to QuickBooks automatically, it gives you a second chance to review the transaction. And if you already have this transaction entered in QuickBooks, you won't see that a rule is applied. You'll actually see um, a match here. So I'll just create a manual entry to match uh, one of these transactions. So now if I scroll down, we should see a match for our SO. So one record has been found and the option here is to add, sorry, match instead of add, like the other two. Right, now let's see what happens when you have a manual entry created and a match available, but you have auto add turned on in your rules. So let's just go back and edit our rule. Turn on auto add, and don't forget to put in a tax code, otherwise um, it'll the transactions will still show up on your bank feed uh, for you to review and add a tr uh, tax code. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. We'll go back to banking and we'll see that even the the record here that we had a match for has now been automatically entered into QuickBooks. 
So now if you look at my recent transactions, you'll see this is the one that I manually entered and then the three that were auto added. So you can see that this was duplicated even though there was a match. So just to reiterate, if you use the auto add feature, know that you should not be creating those transactions manually. And that's how to create bank rules in QBO. Some things to remember, you can edit your rules once you create them by clicking edit. You can view what's been categorized by clicking on the categorize tab here. And you can perform batch actions to undo what you've done or to move uh, transactions to the categorize tab or exclude them. Now let's move on to missing transactions. If you find that random transactions are missing from QuickBooks, make sure you check the excluded tab in case they were accidentally excluded during the review process. Alternatively, if you find that new transactions seem to be stuck or missing, the issue may be on your bank's end. We suggest that you sign into your bank's online banking website and check to ensure the transactions are there. Then click the update button in QuickBooks to manually refresh and pull the transactions. At this point, if you see error 102 or 105, it means the bank is still working to resolve the issue. You can choose to do a manual upload to QuickBooks so you can continue working. To do this, you'll first need to export the transaction data from your bank's website, adjust the date range to ensure that you are bringing in transactions which are missing to avoid any duplicates, and then in QuickBooks, ensure you're on the correct account, and then click on the link account dropdown and select Upload File. You can upload transactions that are saved in CSV, QFX, QBO, OFX, or TXT file formats only, and most banks will have these options available. Missing transactions can occur when there's other information missing. When connecting your account to QBO, you're only asked for one or two of your security questions that you've set up with the bank. Typically, banks require three or up to five security questions and sometimes even require a one-time password. So if you're seeing a warning like this, click the button here to complete your secure connection. Alternatively, if you've updated your security questions with your bank or credit card institution, you'll need to update them in QuickBooks too, and you'll see error 185 if that's the case. If you see error 103, it usually means the user ID or password are incorrect. You'll see this error in QuickBooks if you've updated your bank password, but have yet to update your password in QuickBooks. Error 108 means there is a message from your bank on their website. It's usually for scheduled maintenance or system updates, which can block the connection to QuickBooks. Error 324 means that QuickBooks is unable to find the account you set up. This may happen if the account has been changed or the bank has issued a new card or new account, or you've closed your account. To find more information on how to solve for these bank errors, head on over to our website. Go to qbo.ca. Under Learn and Support, you can access our community and you can search for a bank error. To find a number of articles to help you resolve bank errors. You can also search Create Bank Rules to find steps for everything we covered today. Thank you for watching.